Let's be honest, you copied a loadout of some random junkie cause you saw him dropping nukes in your matches and for some unknown reason you thought you can do the same. To make matters even more worse, you copied his loadout, mixed and matched with your own loadout and started your next match thinking it's time to throw a godly abomination. But little did you know, after a few minutes into the game, you started sucking even bigger gigantic moon sized ass. Wonder why that happens? It's simple, it's because you're a woman. I mean, your loadout sucks. What's up folks, today's video is a long time coming. Today, we're gonna cover probably one of the most controversial topic in the game, loadouts. No, not the meta loadouts, those days are long gone in Paladins. Meta slave Andes can suck a fat baby's lollipop. Today, we're gonna be looking at one toxic loadout and their playstyles for all 57 concurrent characters in Paladins. Some of these loadouts are extremely fun, some of these loadouts are game breaking, and some of these loadouts comes with a price. Regardless, I'll be showing you the playstyles along with the builds so you can finally be able to copy a loadout and impress your stepmom with it. Enjoy! Since I'm a flanker main, so let's kick things off with the flank class. Fear does not fade, it only hides in wait. No matter how much you argue Curse Revolver over anything, you'd be surprised to know how much fun and crippling depression this talent can produce. I mean, take a listen to this ASMR. With Chronos 2, this loadout powers up to its full potential. Reversal becomes a spammable ability, throwing back a big chunk of burst if not getting a free kill with it every few seconds. Playstyle is simple, you put up your reversal, hit someone with it and then land a few shots and then you put up your reversal again. The ammo card is sufficient enough to keep the fun going. Farm from the backline, dive if you want to, take 1v1s, your ego is your only limit. The only downside is that it comes with the price. You gotta hit those reversal shots buddy. Check yourself before you wreck yourself! For the Chrome Dome, obviously Bounce House is all the way. You mash the DR card with the LM Reset card and for fillers a bit of a surety and some micro adjustments to call it a day. The coolest thing is, you don't get punished for missing out your targets anymore. Rather, it's a welcome change if your teammates assist on the target that you jump in. It's a pretty nice touch in quality of life change for Buck, as I'm pretty sure every Buck main can relate to it and it also makes Buck that much more reliable and annoying to deal with. But in spite of all, a little insurance policy won't hurt anyone. Keeping this card paired with Chronos 3 helps quite a bit with many circumstances. It's an old habit from the old days, and I feel like it's a good one to keep. Oh hello gorgeous, ready to get to work? This character in my opinion is very pretentious. His kit makes it looks like he's got potential, but reality always tells a different story for the pink guy. Take it as a grain of salt, he might be more fun in a distant future. The good news is, he's got not one, but two fun playstyles. There's a speed build which allows you to zoom across the map every time you shoot something, or someone. Second one is a clever gamble, since your stack constantly keeps decaying, so there's a bubble build to take advantage of it. The idea is relying on your sword and intentionally draining your LMB stack so you can always get a 200 HP bubble. Since the playstyle is based around using your sword, then with some modification you can pair it up with the hefty talent. This is where this build literally shines. Caspian turns into a Zim. The most toxic playstyle for Eevee comes off of Snow Globe talent. With the right build and items, you can spam the ult every now and then to secure a free kill. The main focus of the build? You keep Elim reset card while fillers being ammo cards. The playstyle is as simple as the build. You come in, throw ult, get a free kill and fly away. Lesson 1. Always strike first. Koga's most cranked playstyle without a second doubt is Dragon Fangs. The amount of BS you can pull off with it is unbearable. Keeping these 3 mandatory cards and 2 fillers, your loadout out is all set. Playstyle is equally risky and even more so rewarding. Focus a target, hit it with a few claw, 
and then skew. Keep on spamming your Chloride clicks and Flahad and Drogos. Go through shields, go through blind ladies, come back from the map, the options are endless. The only downside is, you'll need to heal every once in a while due to the high impact of cauterize in late games. But regardless, it's arguably the most fun way to play Koga. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. If you are a Lexi main, then nothing comes above or beyond Discovery, period. But there was a toxic build with a very underrated talent, Heroism. Since this talent provides you 90% DR and CC immunity, so the motive of the build was, you need to keep on dashing every 1 or 2 seconds, and while doing so, you gain speed and ammo. So these 3 cards were a must keep. With proper items, this loadout practically makes you a terminator. Ugh. Excuse me, I need to go stab something. <laughs> <laughs> Maeve's got one of the most toxic, unbearable, rage quit worthy talent, which is Street Justice. There's nothing, nothing you can do against it. It's almost uncounterable. Flankers cannot flank, tankers cannot stand on point, supports cannot heal, also you being you, not limiting your Maeve and playing her like you normally would. Honestly, it creates a huge panic in the opposition when someone notices you're playing this normless talent. The loadout's got many variations though, but from a former full-time Maeve Toxic abuser myself, I figured if you pair up speed with DR in your pounds and make a build around it, then it creates the ultimate Maeve diff. I once had a sword passed down for generations. I dropped it down. Enemies behind us! Enemy killing spree. Why are you looking at me like I have three heads? I wish I had a sponsor ad so I could run the sponsor ad here instead of explaining Moji. Oh. Moji's fun only lasts if the opponent's mouse and keyboard gets disconnected and if the map happens to be tight, filled with linear flanking routes, and if you're playing boom boom with the standard build. It's not polite to stare at a woman's bombs. In bot lobbies, she's extremely viable and got two builds to keep your trigger fingers happy. One is the self-reliable build where you cycle around your abilities and keep yourself sustained and stay alive much longer than you normally should. And the second one is the speed build where even if your team kills a target that was in the effect of your poison, then the speed card would still get activated. There's not much toxicity you can do with this kid, considering his playstyle is, was, and it'll probably forever be in a strength. The standard loadout for Talos is, you invest in DR, life rip, movement speed, extra health, and a fair amount in the teleport cooldown, and that's pretty much it. Your game sense and your skills with this character is the only way to go if you want to have fun. And probably your broken as MSS2 if you're playing on a controller. Yes, I'm dying. Ironically, this is a pretty underrated character and he's got a fair share of maneuverability over a certain toxic build that you can abuse. His most toxic playstyle actually comes from Spring Loaded, as Explosives and the Burst SMG is the majority of his burst. With two variations and a few must-have items, your playstyle's just perfect for aggressive ego fights and ruining people's aggressive ego dives. The way you play it, you shoot, dive behind or dive towards your minion to activate the bombs and then you shoot again. You can practically make people two shot goodbye with it. Be careful. Stop it. Step into the light. Enemy. Enemy. I was born in shadow, molded by it. The character itself is toxic enough to go up against. The DR, healing, and the HP card along with two fillers, aka the standard loadout, is more than enough to cause havoc in the game. But if you're looking for a different appetite, then there's an alt spam build, where the name itself is self-explanatory, I believe. Did 
The paladins are playing you for a fool. They do not care for your people. The meta has changed a lot ever since I made the War Wanted video, which I highly recommend watching considering the video is still relevant. Now, her current most annoying playstyle comes from unyielding pressure. It do take away your identity as a flanker though, but don't let that idea fool you, cause now you can sit back, babysit your healer and farm tanks for days. Any beefy character melts in seconds the moment they show their face to you. A true tragedy. I am the Reaper. Let the bodies hit the floor! Uh, I want to take a moment because there's so much I can talk about this character. Reason being, half my identity as a Paladins player is based around lifelessly one tricking Zin. But time, time is a big issue. I still have 43 champions to go through and I'm already running out of cringy jokes. If you ask me, then I'm going to be unreasonably biased about it. Zin's only toxic playstyle is 4 must have cards with 1 filler. Idea is, you invest your speed on Q and upon activating Q you get your F back and nobody can chase you and nobody can stop you. You can pull off the most cranked playstyle known to mankind. Okay, I might be a bit over exaggerating, but you get the idea. Spamming this load alone got me to master solo in season 1 and I still think it's a very very OP build. It's just a take it or leave, my personal opinion, that kind of tip. Alright, time to shed some light on damage mains. Surprisingly, we got two bomb characters right off the bat. Bow before your queen! Ugh, my head already hurts. Why are you the way you are? Her name should be Spam Queen, and as the name suggests, she does that one job very effectively. As of now, she's got only one viable talent and only one playstyle. So buy deft hands, grab that build, and spam every corner of the map. Fun! Oh, and about the loadout, it's as basic as it goes. I have such an explosive personality. A true man of culture plays Accelerant. It's so fun and so easy to abuse. The idea is to hold one portion of the map while in the process blocking enemies flank, push or getaways. Surprisingly, it works even against Resil stacks because a short stun can mess up many escape abilities. This particular playstyle is a long as discussion of its own. But if you know BK and if you know his ways, then with the right build and in the right server, this character is one of the most fun DPS to play as. Ziggs, that wasn't very nice. Uh, it's that one character that'll never get balanced, never get old, and will never need a second guess as long as exaction exists. This forbidden playstyle was banned a long time ago, until somebody in the game dev most definitely mains Cassie and brought it back. Loadout requires cooldown on dodge, a bit of sustain, that one universal permanent card and rest fillers. This loadout is so toxic to an extent that I hate it, I have genuine trauma with it, I get Vietnam flashbacks every time I see freaking Cassie. It's playstyle, for those of you who don't know, every time you hit a target right after you roll, you get your F back and you keep on rolling and shooting around like a prick. Dead men tell no tales. In short, Hurl is basically the jack of all trades, master of none. He's not going to be able to do much other than making your game unplayable. He's gonna melt you in seconds. He's gonna make the point uninhabitable. He's gonna outsnipe the snipers. On top, if he's running Abyss Spike, a very underrated talent, then chances for you to flank him stays a dream. How he falls short is a separate topic and a video discussion of its own, but as of now, he's considered one of the elite toxic characters in the game. Playstyle is simple, just hold the W key. He's a walking death simulator. Release the Kraken! You will not collect any Dragon Balls. I bet you've always been shooting potatoes in the sky and never met an actual Drogo's main. I hope you never do. A combustible Drogos can cuck you in ways that you can never imagine, especially in narrow end maps where Drogos gets arguably the best fella out of any blasters. Now for loadouts, his cards didn't receive any changes in years, and the standard combo loadout is considered still the best, with a few personal variations. Playstyle solely depends on your game sense and 
well, your experienced capability of hitting those spit shots. Fire cannot kill a dragon. You've been playing Imani wrong. The most toxic playstyle for Imani comes from a very straightforward build. It's always been there, you just never paid attention. All you need is these two mandatory cards and taking three fillers, you're all good to go. With Kronos 2, this loadout gets fully activated. Three is obviously overkilling. Your RMB on both element becomes spammable and the cooldown on Q becomes non-existent. In a compact tryhard team, this build slaps extremely hard. I'm going to catch you. This is one of those skill gap eliminating character designing that went horribly wrong. Not only the character is extremely frustrating to play, but also equally frustrating to play against. Overall, a very poor character designing that backfires in both ends. She's 57th, aka the most recent released character, so we might have to wait a little before she's properly balanced or left abandoned, who knows. But for now, Spirit Bomb or Empowered Curse seems to be the only two viable options with a damage and a HP buff build. I'm not insulting you, I'm describing you. Reposition yourself, boy. Get rejuvenated and godlike speed. What more do you need? Alright, time to kill myself. An extremely fun way to play Nessa, and if you have good aim and game sense, then you can position yourself around and control the entire map with it. Now that's problematic. If we win this battle, fine. I'll have dinner with you. Can I skip this one, please? <laughs> so, this is one of those few characters that I absolutely hated. Like, chewed down to the bone, I'll never forget as a flanker how painful my games were. Stick to the script, Alex. So, you play Alacrity. The main focus of the loadout is, you make your RMB and F as spammable as possible, and cycle around your cooldown in a way that you have it back whenever you need it the most. With a few variations, depending on your playstyle, this was more easily possible before the nerf. But now, you have to be very cautious and invest more on a few dedicated items to make it happen. Never been so happy. Her pick rate went down. She lives in the street where she belongs. <laughs> they never saw it coming. Again, she's one of those low picked characters that are slowly being forgotten. But she has a very fun build. Wouldn't comment saying it's a toxic one though. You challenge people or force people to duel you inside your dome, while your dome helps you give DR and puts an extra helping hand in your damage stats. With the right build, your dome gives you other benefits as well, such as draining your leap cooldown, etc. With a few build variations, depending on the playstyle, your dome is used either aggressively or passively, depending on the situation. With her passive and with the perfect items, it's a pretty fun build. Oh, you're so cute when you lose your sh Sati has one of the most cancerous playstyles, and the playstyle depends entirely on how well you can manipulate your build around this one card. The higher you invest your point in, the higher the gamble goes. Just don't be like this guy, he's a nub. Keep it minimal, yeah? Don't go overboard with it. An illusion is nothing compared to a mirage. I understand completely. But there's a different approach to Shaolin. Desert Silence. Paired up with Windwall, you can practically make people 40% slower and have so much fun with it. But as you all know, every fairy tale eventually comes to an end, and yours, well, it'll end even sooner once people notice your loadout and picks Raziel. Many men wish death upon me. Sadly for Strix, there's only one way to go, and that's Nocturnal. Crackshot do seem fun at first, but Haven and Deer builds ruins everything. 
and well, this has been a joke ever since. So his playstyle is kind of stuck in between two categories. One where he uses an energy and speed build that allows him to play extremely aggressive, where he constantly rotates around and kills people, makes Twitch streamers ban his videos on YouTube, and second, he uses an all spam build and usually streaks hot anchors at a place, playing like a typical sniper, and anytime anybody wants a piece of him, he just spams the ult. Honestly, much like any sniper, streaks can be extremely toxic if he knows his ways. Looks like I am the hot one after all. Again, a similar situation, no other viable talent other than Tigron's Fury, and we all know how to play it. But still, for newcomers, here you go. Insult you? I'd rather just shoot you. In this current patch, unfortunately, there's no other way to reconsider your choices over hunting party. Mercy kill, nerfed. BM, big nerfed. Heartbroken noises. So, the motive of the build is, you get your cooldowns back, especially on your mark, so you can mark enemies and help assist your teammates. Simple. But the big downside is, this loadout is only toxic if your team's taking the advantage of it. If your team sucks Long Johnson, then you're better off playing Mercy Kill, and I think it's still the best talent for solo carrying, despite the nerf. Oh, and the loadout is the same old one. Then in doubt, empties a magazine. The one-man army, the lone wolf, the man, the myth, the legend, cardio man, make a DR build, stack more DR, boy you're a tank, make a speed build, stack more speed, boy you're a roadrunner, make a granada build, stack chronos, Alejandro, Armano, you're a true patriot, cardio, OP, <laughs> nothing can be compared to it. show you what it means to defy me. Booby trap. An uncontrollable playstyle, you're not using the drones to reveal anymore, rather, you're using it as an offensive ability to counter your enemies. Loadout depends on the playstyle, but personally I love the speed and the reveal build. I had the fortune of meeting a few Vivian one tricks in my life, and they gave me enough wisdom to admit, despite the character being extremely useless, she has surprisingly one of the most toxic playstyles. Yay! Look at me! I'm harmless! Alright, kinda have to say I saved the best damage for the last. The character itself is toxic enough by default, but it's hard for her to be toxic overall. Scorn is great for Titan maps where you can trap anyone with it, or just casually throw it in exchange for a free kill every once in a while. Blast Flower is insane against tank heavy comps, or against beefy comps in general. And of course, Nightshade exists to practically 1v1 any pesky flanker or DPS. Surprisingly, she has 3 decent talents that's viable for different situations. So here you go. Alright, time for you to pick a tank. Show me your cannon tough guy, I bet mine's bigger. After the nerf, unfortunately, the only viable playstyle for her is the big shield. But don't get things wrong, shield ash is very toxic. It gives her a large variety of choices and limits the time window to kill her. The fact that you can get your shield back after every boop, oh man. There are no records of you in my time, and I can see why. Atlas's most toxic playstyle comes from solo deja vu carry. All you need is this one card, max it out and the rest depends on your style. Playstyle is much more scarier than Ash, you cycle your abilities, heal up and retake your fights. Atlas's life is tied up with Chronos, so regardless whatever you pick or whatever your build might be, you have to buy Chronos to fully activate the loadout. Now, they face me. With the right build, using Persistence, you're the most self-sustainable tank in the game. With these two cards on a HP build, you can stay alive without a support for so long. You can practically give your support a free pass to choose not to heal, but to do damage at the start. Oh, better 
Beric's got a gun! He's gonna shoot you down! Beric's toxicity level depends on how manipulative you are with your kid in your fallen situations. Now explaining that would be a video on its own. Just a simple word of advice, just don't play Forge Fire and you're toxic by default. If you're new, just get started with these self-explanatory loadouts and thank me later. It's not polite to stare, but I understand. Just get yourself any standard build, pick ages and do what you do best for the culture. Flank. Also, a side note, if Aegis were to ever get nerfed, it's not Scorch that's gonna be in meta. Rather, it's formidable. I mean, take a look at this. <clears throat> you obviously can't do this without Kronos, but when you have Kronos 3, yeah? This is what a fucking normal fireball looks like with Nando. You're hitting three people. You look at the loadout, that is a 9 second reduction on your charge cooldown. And you look at your charge and it has a 10 second cooldown. So, yeah. You do this. And I'd assume you're hitting at least two people with this or else you shouldn't even be an under player. Then you do this again. Then you do this again. And then you do this. Then you do this again. Yeah. And if at some point in time you get fucked up, you just do this. And then you do this. <coughs> Gaming. And then you do this. And then you do this again. I am not some sculpture for you to gaze at. We all know nothing's more valuable than Mama's Grace and we also know nothing comes in between treacherous ground for your guilty pleasures. But casually Inara's most fun and toxic playstyle is Tremors. The only reason why this talent is so hated is because it sucks in open end maps, where it shines and works amazingly well in tight maps. Getting a wall every 5 seconds, blocking entries or trapping enemies with it? <sighs> That's enough paladins for one day. Never send a boy to do a man's job. Khan holding his shield on is about priceless as wondering if a snowman would go to hell. Khan's slow fire rate cannot compensate storm of bullets. Neither he tanking with his shield on will bring any legitimate value to the team, considering his entire potential as an off tank been thrown out of the window. So, storm of bullets, play it with the speed build, or the LM reset build. Your call. Slow and steady, my friend. Slow and steady. You have to be the best hooker in town, and then you can finally appreciate the true beauty of Pluck. When you hook someone and that damage pops on top of his head, the adrenaline, the satisfaction. <laughs> Honestly, hooking with this compared to this is day and night apart. You only need one card, and the rest depends on your playstyle. Oh, you wanna play rough, huh? Big Mommy Nix sadly has to wait. She just came out, and her kit seems like somewhat doesn't work in her favor as much. But we folks are still testing her out, trying to figure her ways. And I'm pretty sure you amazing folks are also one tricking this time bomb. I'd encourage you to test out my work in progress loadout and let me know what you think. The abyss consumes all. Rome's been very toxic lately. I guess I'm fortunate that I have this video in my collection. You see, I've been telling you, Alex Hamada can predict the future. The way Rome's new playstyle work is, you keep this card, max it out, and roll subservience. Bruh, you're fighting someone just when you're about to die. Round 2, mother There's two variations of the build and items differ alongside whichever one you're using. Unfortunately though, the whole thing becomes a gimmick when everybody has max card. Mmm, sexy lady! Focus, ruckus! This goblin is all about wise picking his fights and diving in the right time to initiate his toxicity. And for that, Nothing comes close to Aerial Assault. It's one of those cases where a good Ruckus build is determined how good you know the character, and how you play Ruckus in 2023 is a whole ass novel of its kind. No, I... I am a monster! Why did it end like this? 
terminus stands in the line of those who were betrayed. Oh, three brasad on him and ultimate. Good luck on living. Good luck on living. Forgotten. <laughs> oh my god, I know you survived. Abandoned. Playing this character in this current tank roster is like driving a car in a race, but backwards. But fortunately, all hope is not lost. Since Termin's most useful item is Nimble, so with this card along with a filler, there is a build where you get absolutely no movement penalty on your Q, and hitting your secondary gives you juice. You block anything and everything with it and zoom around while doing it. Pretty fun! The sight of you makes me want to destroy my glasses forever. There's nothing more scary than a Torvald demolishing little kids from existence. Jer Curran's been toxic for a long, long time, but due to the high peak rate of these two, DC never got the spotlight it deserved. Well, now it's the best talent for Torvald, and it's toxic AF. You only need these two mandatory cards, and the rest is entirely up to you. Oh, and the reason I keep this at level 3 is because my friends are idiots and they seem to miss their shots even more when I bubble them. I've got ya! Everyone who isn't us is an enemy. The character literally spreads toxin liquids even when she's kissing the floor and rolling around. In my opinion, the most fun way to play Yagis is with the SBS talent. Its potential to barely save your 1HP teammates is what makes this talent really fun to play. Yag has many, many variations of builds, but a personal advice, your build should correspond with your chosen cards. My man Bloom explained it 10 times better than me. Alright, so left click benefits right click, right click benefits uh, hardening, Q. Your Q benefits speed right click. Let's say Kronos 2. Let's imagine, yeah, I went into people. Press Q, you're in out as left click and you just shoot around people you have a lot of right click so it might sort of stay there you press q and your q finishes you left click right click gone all right i'm gonna turn down my voice a little and it's time to enter the chill zone because we're picking support Summon an Abyssal Lord, they said. It would be fun, they said. Despite Corvus' projection being bugged, so there's a new toxic build in town, which somewhat shadows the old one. A bit of insight you may or may not know. If you don't blink, then you get 2 seconds off from your projection cooldown. With this in mind, if you twiddle and tweak Corvus' TPS build around these two cards, then killing a Corvus in a fair 1v1 situation becomes a fairy tale. What the fuck just happened there? Do you want to play with fire? The idea of playing this booba character is when you use your wings, you get your pyre back, and when you use your pyre, you get your wings back. Simple as daylight. In addition, you keep a bit of self-sustain and also increase the pyre size a bit, so you can hit those beams more frequently. between a snake and the mongoose. Maelstrom is my all-time favorite. I have so much fun memories with it. All you need is to close your eyes, keep these three cards, and congratulate yourself for being a Grok main. The amount of fun and toxicity this character used to bring back in the day is unimaginable. If I come back to play Paladins after 5 years, if this game makes it that is, then I'll definitely come back for Grok. Are you lost, little one? Ever wondered what a sniper would look like if it was a healer? Well, say no more. In Paladins, anything is possible. The corruption mustn't win. Let's go, Luna. 
think of playing DPS IO is like playing Talos. You set up a safe zone, dive aimlessly because you have unlimited stall duration, and if you die, you come back. Unlike Talos's portal normally drags him back. IO's biggest problem is that she has no burst, and on the bright side, she also has no fall off damage, and shoots relatively fast, much like a DPS. So hitting your shots is the only way to go. There's two variations for a DPS IO. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna say the names. Don't touch the hair! It takes centuries to get it looking this good. Genos got two toxic playstyles. The first one lies with Binary Star. The damage output from headshots is what makes this talent really broken. So a little bit of self-sustain, ammo regen, and focusing primarily on lifesteal and HP card, you're kinda all set. Genos stays all powerful even through the late games, which is what makes this talent really viable, compared to this other toxic playstyle which is Void Grip. Cool fact, with this build, you're able to actively heal and upskirt ladies at the same time. But downside is, Rizzle makes you a fallen god in late games, cause your talent becomes entirely useless. Oh, I have the need. The need to feed. The most OP fact about Lilith is she has uncauterizable self-healing, and due to the extreme low base health, other than Drogos, she is always execution immune. So the best way to abuse your kid is, you keep Blood Cannon. This card is a must, and alongside you keep the damage buff or a DR card as a second primary. And the rest? Fillers. And the way you play Lilith is much like a dive character. Don't be... salty. Snake Toss. This playstyle will forever be toxic regardless whatever happens to the game. Current base loadout is, you invest a big chunk in HP and evenly distribute your points in Slither and its movement speed. There's another variation where keeping the DR card gets the priority, but you really don't need much of a DR unless you're up against spammy comms. Our chemistry is explosive. The hidden flank that'll forever be remembered and cherished but will never be classified as one. Pip was, will be, and still is one of the best flankers in the game. Despite being a support, he or she has one of the most fun and abusive playstyle. And surprisingly, after all the nerfs and quote unquote balance changes, the playstyle remained exactly the same. I commissioned an art piece the other day. I call it Ray Tracing. I'll be bragging, but the amount of fun I had playing Ray, and in case you're from SCA server, I was the guy who created the Ray meta and was abusing it for a whole season. Yikes, my bad if I hurt anyone's feelings. Depending on when you're watching this video, Ray has probably the most broken as damage playstyle that a support class can possibly offer. Explaining her playstyle is a 10 minute worth of video on its own, but in brief, you want to remaster your kit with stacking more damage reduction and cycle around your link and envelope. As a Ray main, I'm telling you, nothing can 1v1 you. You'll only die if you misuse your kit or get focus fired by the entire team. Just copy this loadout and thank me later. I hate it when I walk into another dimension and forget why I'm here. The speed, the durability, and the capability of not having to reload at all would make any character unreasonably toxic. And surprisingly, Sirius can do just all that without breaking a sweat. Despite having the title Healbot, the character can also be a killing machine. She can race with Genos. She can challenge a Makoa. She can 1v1 practically anybody, with a few exceptions. People don't understand the true potential of Soul Collector, and you really need a few dedicated cards on a certain point to make it work. That's the reason why, despite it sounding so simple, it's arguably one of the difficult playstyles to master. All I have to say is, you can actively solo heal and put a big ass number on your damage stats if you can play Soul Collector right. inside. I know you have a good heart. Alright, don't wanna start a war in the comment section, so for focusing lens, your prime focus is to stay mobile, take better angles, usually the unexpected angles, and of course not to mention landing all your shots for the damage buff. And for Rezo, 
you're mainly focused on using your illusions to slap a 1k burst every now and then in between your 1v1s. This throws off a lot of 1v1s and shifts the favor on your side by the way. But gotta admit, if you're resigning in joy in 2023, you deserve a medal my friend. And congratulations, you made it till the end. Honestly, you can dislike the video if you want, cause bruh, you just watched a Paladin's video for a solid 40 minutes straight in 2023. And also, I probably roasted your favorite waifu and wasted your time. You know what, feel free to ignore the sub button too. But hey, all jokes aside, I'm just genuinely happy you stuck around through the entirety of the video, which took me 3 months to finish. And all your love and support is what motivated me to help complete this project. Anyways, please feel free to throw your griefing loadouts down in the comments section. And while you're at it, suggest what one tip video should I make next. I promise, <laughs> I'll try to keep it shorter than 40 minutes. You guys are amazing. Love you all. Goodbye. <laughs>